Alrighty, welcome to Haven. First thing I like to do in here. I don't know the value of these swords, so I can't find it on the auction house, but these swords that you start with are soulbound. So whenever you die and respawn, this thing will always stay with you. You won't drop it ever. And I know a lot of people like to use them. I don't really run into circumstances where I need to use them, so I like to save them. Maybe try and sell them on the outside. I put the torch on. Then, I come over to the garden. And I look in the garden to see if it's full. Because if it's full, it kind of tells me that there's not maybe as many people, you know, on this instance of Haven. So once you come over to the garden, you will notice there's a statue right here. And this guy, it only let, it just lets you travel between havens. So there are a bunch of random haven instances that you can join. Like you just type in random numbers and hope you find one. People seem to, th you know, it's when you look at this and you see four digits, you, you think you think it has to be four, but it doesn't. Like you can do like two one nine, this kind of stuff. I'm actually going to switch over here, just because I hope it's got less people, but we'll see. It'll kick you out of the game and then you log back in. Click it twice. Now we're going to hop back in. So, when you're in Haven, you'll notice in the top right, there is a tutorial to teach you how to do some things. If you're new to the game, you should probably do that. And, you know, just learn about what's going on and... Oh, here we go. We got a player on this haven, so I didn't pick the best one, but we'll still see. So follow the tutorials, but also come back to the center of town here. And as you look around, you'll notice these guys. Some of them say tutor. So if I talk to this guy, and I ask him about melee, attacking. And since I'm using the torch, I could do. Club, but you know what? I'm going to be using dagger or sword, so we can even learn daggers for later. So, what that'll do is I'll press L in my action points here, melee combat. We can see he gave me six levels in each one. Well, to be honest, I'm not actually sure how many he gave me. Oh, no, he gave me 25. Yep, so skill train 225, but it's being held back by melee combat, so let me see here. I don't remember if he teaches melee combat. Maybe he doesn't. Okay, so. But then, you know, there's the anatomy tutor here. She will, she or he, whatever it is on your instance, will help you learn how to bandage yourself. This guy here can help you learn to craft. I'm going to be a bow crafter on this character, so... We're going to learn all the bow things real quick from him. Not all of the bow things, just the basics. And then... There's a magic tutor right here and then this guy over here is following me we'll see hopefully he's a noob out this way to the west is probably the most important trainer to visit before tutor to visit before you leave even and that is the 
domestication tutor. He will teach you taming and creature control, which is going to help you be able to ride a horse. You're going to come out this way to the west. Equerry is where you will stable any pets you tame here. If you tame any pets in Haven, make sure you put them in here when you're logging out and stuff so they don't die from bugs and resets. Talk to the taming tutor guy here. And we learn about taming. Look, creature control taming. You can read through his other options if you need to learn more. And domestication. So creature control 27. That's pretty good. Um, there are other lores in profession here. If you come down to... Where is it? I'm just gonna search this I use the search bar always it's much faster so I know I know the horses are called equity so if you have this equity to 100 you only need 16 creature control to have a max level horse and ride it and that will require 100 points in mammalia which is a profession skill so once you leave Haven, you can get that by killing horses and skinning horses and or cooking horses and their carcasses and stuff like that. It'll that cooking the carcass or skinning them, butchering them on the butcher table will help you get the equity up. And there are pretty big horse spawns that are untouched that you can find and just slay some horses and. Uh, if it, if there's a lot, I would just sit out there and field butcher them. So now that we've left Haven, we're going to come out here and we are going to do a cape run. We don't really care about the cape. There's so many of them outside, but they're just these little red capes that you can find. And on the corpses that have the capes, there are usually weapons, bandages, food, and decent armor to help you get through this. Now, I will tell you, um, before you're doing this, you know, make sure you can probably at least kill a Razorback pig. If not, I mean, we'll, we, we might find out, so. There's also a chance to run into two bandits, usually one at a time, so. Walk with your weapon out. It makes you walk a little slower, but when you run, it's quicker, so. You get the speed you need. This video might run a little long because I am fresh character, so I'm not as fast as I would be normally. But yep, we're gonna head here, southwest, down this road. And we are gonna go until we get to where the road splits off to the right. And we're gonna turn off to the right. There can be Razorbacks in that area. And if there are, we're going to try to avoid them. And hopefully we can. Hopefully there are none there. I don't know what determines if they spawn or not. Sometimes I see them, sometimes I don't. If you want to, if you want to speed up the video to make this a little bit quicker for yourself, you can go ahead. I'm going to leave it at normal speed so that new players and people, you know, can follow along and kind of see where I'm going here. 
kind of good that I'm slow so you can keep up easier. So you can see the road forks off there. I just cut up against the mountain here. To the right, I'm heading kind of west, southwest, I guess. My goal is to basically come up here, find some swords and armor, and these swords are pretty much as good or, or better than any sword that people are going to craft for you in Haven, so you don't need to sit and help chat and ask where people are crafting, you just do this run, get the swords. If you go up here and you find these bodies, or you don't find the bodies, you can switch havens and do it again. You know, get like, try, do this a few times, and try and get like, five, six, seven, eight swords. And just go to town on the bandits. <laughs> Your goal, you should be able to, if you really want to push Clade in here, you should try and go for 15 Clade. You can do it. You can. I will show you where the bandits are. I will show you how to do it. And your main goal in Haven is to just pump the clade. If you want to take the time to craft and do all that, go ahead. But get in here, get your swords, get a little bit of money, buy a book, put your book on, start reading. Kill bandits, kill bandits, kill bandits. When you're 15, leave. Because... You can go out into any of the towns in the graveyard. You can make, once you get your butchery up on the skeletons, you can make five to six gold a run off of just killing zombies. If you have a horse with horse bags. Now on top of that, when you get your horse with horse bags, you fill them up with bones. And instead of walking back to town with only 55 weight, Carrying half a stack of zombies, your horse can carry like six or seven stacks of bones or six or seven stacks of zombies back to town. And your crafting speed outside is just so much faster. All the gold you make, you're keeping. You're only taking three gold out of Haven when you leave, if that. So while you're in Haven, grab a book. This, this is for people who want to just get out in the world and experience it, by the way. If you want to stay here and you want to read all the books and you want to get all your crafting up before you go out, you 100% can do that as well. But the main thing about Haven to me is because I like to just get out there talking to people. And here it gets lonely. There's no one around you really. It's kind of depressing. So you just get up here, you get your capes, you get your swords, you... Bump some bandits down. And you just head out. 15 clade. Read some books. Get out of here. Also. When you are. Putting your stats in here. Okay. Make sure. When your constitution. Dexterity and strength are all full. The rest of your points right now while you're training should go into intelligence because intelligence re lifts uh yeah makes you read books faster so while you're training you're getting all your skills up in here and your action points and your professions intelligence is the king then once you're done put that into psych if you have extra points unless you're an intelligence build sure then go ahead but if you're playing a build similar to what I'm playing, like this mounted archer, then go ahead, throw it into psych when you're done. Intelligence until you're done training, though. Your strength and your dex and your constitution are going are to go up as you fight things as well. And the way that these work is see how they're all set to plus, they're all gonna go up. But if I'm not using any psych, 
or any mana type stuff, then Psych isn't really going to go up. I mean, I could set this to minus. And I could lock that for now, I guess, and just see what happens. And get these three full first so I know I'm a good fighter. Okay, so here we are. We're at the first location where the body would be. So they're usually close to the road here. You're up on the road, you're walking, you're just keeping an eye out for a little skeleton body. Okay, sometimes he can be hard to see. If, like, pretty much right here, I've gone too far. So, I need to look around here in these bushes and stuff. Here he is. Get a good look at him. Decayed corpse. No sword, but armor. Better than nothing. This armor's pretty good. It comes a little damaged, but you know. It might be too heavy at first if you put it all on as well. Let's see. And not for my character, but. So that's the first body. Second one's not too far. Maybe a little minute run down here. Oh, also, if you already know the basics of the game, basic crafting, basic combat, you type slash end tutorial. And then it ends it. So you don't have to see that anymore. We just head up here. We're going to grab this other body. This guy is usually right in here. He might not be here. Let me see. He's usually right in this crack here. I might have picked a bad haven to find him. I'm just get a little look around. Sometimes they kind of spawn in the ground. Okay, well, here is the location of the second body. Usually when you come up here, once you... Come from the other one, you walk around. Once you crest over this little hill here, he should be right here. In this little crevice. And I am either having trouble seeing him or... He's just maybe spawned under the ground and... The thing is, they don't move either on... Like, if I kept checking this haven, I, he would never appear. He would always be probably under the ground. They don't move, they just restock. They're like a chest that just sits there, so... Let's move on to the third guy. Third guy is where we have a chance to find uh, a couple bandits. Could be four, could be two, could be zero. We'll see.
after this run, if I don't get anything, I will do more runs and there will be screenshots of the bodies and the loot in kind of like different spots that they can pop up. But they're all, like the first body you saw how I was looking around, that's the little loop you do and if it's not there, it's not, then it's probably underneath the ground bugged out like the second one was. They'll all be within like 20 yards of where I say they are. And there could be more bodies than this on Haven. These are just the three I know of. And I just think it's a really good way to get your start going. Because like this gear, 30, when we get back to town, we can check and see what the vendor sells, but I'm pretty sure this stuff's 10 times better than what you can buy there. Maybe not 10 times, but like double. And I, at the end of this third, at the third uh, after the third body, I will show you how to get back to town safely. On the way back, there is a chance to run into black bears, so... You either want to just try and run from them, like I will do, or you can try and fight them. They hit pretty hard, so... And there's a chance to get three of them on you at once. So, if you get one of these cut from swords, you can probably kill all three of them. So if I get a sword, I'll kill all three to show you. Also on the way back, there's Spelt, which is the best stamina food you will find here. And when I talk about health and stamina foods, what that means is you go in here to statistics, you see these health reserves, mana reserves, stamina reserves. Every time you run and you use stamina or you take damage and you heal up, that pulls out of these reserves. When these reserves get too low, you will start to lose your weight and you can accidentally drop down. But if you overeat above the one on the right here, that your cap, then you can also gain weight and it you will get a quick message that tells you you're about to, you know, go up a weight class. But if you don't pay attention, it's easy to switch weight classes going up a lot easier than it is going down. So, you'll start noticing as you're playing Haven that your character will be exhausted and, like, stamina reserves are low. And that's just because... Like, for me, I'm not going to be cooking. I'm just going to be sitting down and eating, pumping through. But, as we do, if you want to, you can grab some of the spell, learn how to cook it, or find a cook in the help chat and join his haven and maybe have him cook it for you. And keep your stamina reserves and your health reserves up, so that way you don't get exhausted and... Because when your reserves are low, you will notice that when you take damage and stuff, it'll gray bar. So see how it's dark gray going back up? That's fine. But what happens is when you get low, you'll start getting a light gray bar that pushes towards the left. And it makes it to where you don't have as much stamina or you don't have as much health until you sit down and rest that bar off because your character's tired. So keeping your reserves up makes it to where you have to rest your gray bar off less. So up here, we're in this little field here. We got lucky, we didn't see a bandit. And we're looking for the corpse. There he is. And he's got a cup from sword, yay. Here's a bandit right here, so. 
I'm gonna show you. If you do fight a bandit, and I'm pretty sure this one's bugged out so he has more health than the others, we'll see. What should you do if you get into combat? Don't panic, just fight him, block him, and kill him. Oh, he's hitting me. Just take your time. Get your parries. When you parry, it makes it to where you can light attack for full damage plus some. So just look at the way he's attacking, get comfortable with some parries, and... If I can kill him with a torch, you can kill him with a sword. Okay. Take his head for some money. And then we're gonna head back. So we're gonna head south, southeast here. When you come over here, you will see... Let me see where they are here. See, they don't render, they're really these weird looking... Far away, they just look like little bushels, and then as you get close, they're like these cattail looking things here. These are spelt. You can actually eat it raw, it's not too bad. Stamina food. 47 versus this, this pie at 26. You can grab some of that if you want. If you're a Thursar, it's really actually pretty good. Raw, even. If you have the clade to get double stamina reserves from food. After we got some of that, we can head back. Also, just remember when you cook, like if you're going to cook this, this would go down. This number would cut in half, and that's how much you would get. So once you get up here, you can see if the, the, that town is called Fabernum. It's a copy of a town from outside of Haven. Haven is this whole island, this instance, this tutorial. There's Fabernum, and that's the Fabernum Tower. You can see it on the map. Turn over, here's Fabernum. And so we're going to come into town. It's down this way here. Put my new sword on. Wow. So cool. Just gonna run down through these woods. We got some band-aids so we can heal up a little bit we got here. more spelt in here. Remember, when you're coming back to town, try and follow the way I'm going. Don't just jump off cliffs and take damage and kill yourself because it's a long run back from a priest. You gotta go all the way back around from what I know, so. Whenever you are gonna, like this, I'm not gonna make you go down that. That's too steep. This one I could probably do. Okay, took no damage. Just look for a way down. That's not a big drop. If it's a big drop, you are going to die. Unless you've got the right clade and landing technique. I think I see a bear, so let's see what happens here. Ok, 
Okay, yep, we need to go up this way. So when you come down, you see this fork in the road, if you run into it like I did. Take the left one. In this area I'm in right here, if you hear a roar, there's a bear on you, so. And if you're looking for bears, you come up here. From Haven, you'll see the way I'm coming down. You just come up this hill, walk down till you follow this road to the right. There's a guardrail down there. Stand right at that guardrail, and when they spawn, they will run to you and start attacking you. So if you're looking to tame one, that's a decent spot. And then over that big mountain on the back side there, the south side of that mountain, there's another three bears, black bear spawn. Just go up the mountain, climb around the side, and once you're on the back, there'll be like a grassy hill going down, and just look around, you'll see a bunch of bush pigs, and then there's like three blacks, black bears that run around that area. So I'm going to stop by town and then show you where the bandits are. Before I leave town, actually, I'm going to sell this head. See what I, have for you. Deal. See what I can if I can buy a book real quick. Here's the library. You can see it on the map right there. Make sure you flip it over. It shows you where all the places are here. The one it doesn't tell you, I will show you, is the Id identification for jewelry. I'm in here, combat guy. I want to not have to shoot a bow for a little bit, so I will do archery. Come again. After I do See what I have for you. ranged combat. The best, but nice talking to you. Okay. So you see this book requires ranged archery. I think it, I thought it said zero. So we take that off, put this on. Since archery is a sub underneath ranged, it'll push them both up. And that's gonna just raise my archery so I don't have to worry about shooting bows while I'm in here. Anything, I mean any book you read is gonna be good, so if you want to learn to ride a horse, read the riding book. Um, you know, 
lots of books you can just start and then train it yourself as well so don't forget that so here's the other bank you can see it here where it says bank in haven right next to the inn so when we turn this corner here and we head up through this building that's got like an archway through it you'll see here the next building up here is the accessory identification person if you find jewelry in here make sure you bring it in here and go to this enchantment guy here click the identify tab and identify your trinkets and then if you get one with trinket luck or anything like that trinket luck or any kind of luck on it just go ahead come to this guy buy the cup room recharge polish polish that one first and charge it and then equip it so that way when you identify your next trinket you have a better chance of it having better stats and then make sure they're both equipped and charged with that polish from the guy over here and you'll be flying through me personally i last time i was in here i got clade 14 i should have went for 15 and i only found one trinket the whole time and it was a pretty bad necklace so um good luck on that we'll see so heading to the bandits we are heading out of the southeast side of town And we're going to go past the graveyard to this place called the Dungeon. And also, the Ruins is pretty good as well. Pull my sword out here. There is a big boss in the graveyard you can kill. He will get he's like 30 something clayed. He will give uh a couple gold, I think. Maybe we'll stop and do him real quick. Just for a little boost in money. I pretty much just slam overhead attacks when I'm training. I know it gives slashing and it I know I'm pretty much gonna hit them in the head. Alright, here's the general. He's I think considered a boss, I'm not sure. Make sure you parry him every time. If he hits you, he's gonna hit kinda hard. I can let him hit me once to show you, so. Don't be greedy with your parries on this guy. Up. Down. Right. Down. Let's get used to his attacks. Oops. Okay, I agree. That could have been the end of me. 
we get his head, 50, 48, 1, so almost 2 gold. I'm not picking up the body, it's too heavy, not worth my time right now. Whenever you have a lot of silver, you can sell it to her, and she will give you the upgraded version, like the gold, like I just did there. Nice talking to you. Get some band-aids in. Maybe save a couple. I sit down and rest when we get over here. When I get into the top of the dungeon, I will set my priest, my home priest, to the priest in the top of the dungeon. Because from what I remember, when you die in the dungeon and you click priest, it'll send you all the way out there. I don't know why this guy in here doesn't work, but he will work if he's your home priest. You can just click home and you'll go straight to the top so you can run back down and grab your stuff if you die. I'm not saying you are going to die. I'm just saying if you do. Since we're training with melee, that is why I put all my points into strength at first. So, just so you know. And this sword requires a 63 strength. You'll still be able to use it, but it won't do as much damage unless you have that much strength, so... There's a priest right here on the right side. We're going to set home and then we're going to rest before we go down. You find your rest when you press L. You're going to open up your action skills. You're going to click on the very top show all skill icons. Resting. Drag that out here. And sit your ass down, boy. While you're resting, later on you'll notice that active regener- uh, Yeah, I think it's called active regeneration. That'll start going up too. While you're in Haven and training and stuff, that's okay. But later on, you don't really need or want active regeneration. It's just a waste of points. Because bandaging does so much, and you can just eat food to get gray bar back, and I'll and sit down and rest normal, that kind of stuff. So, when you leave Haven, you're not going to spend nearly as much time sitting down or walking. So far, you're going to have a horse. All right, we're rested up. We're gonna head down, and I'm gonna show you these bandit boys. So when you come down here, you come down these first flights of stairs. There's nothing to worry about coming down here yet. 
It's when you get to the first one that's not stairs. Right here. So he could either be on your right or your left if there's one here. Here he is. Now because these guys use an axe and a one-hander, it can be kind of confusing to new people which side he's swinging from when he does uh, thrust versus his right swing or left swing, whatever you call it. We're just going to grab their heads and move on. I swear I just heard one over here, but we'll see. Usually I come... That is a shortcut to get down deeper quicker, but there's a bandit that can be over here, so... I like to come this way. Kind of look through the metal for him. I think he might actually patrol out here, so he might be out here, and he might not be here if someone else is down here. Make sure he doesn't go this way. Yeah, someone else might be here, we'll see. There should be two on these stairs or near here. If you ever think you're going to die, just run. Run all the way to the top where that priest is. With this armor, you can kind of just let them swing on you. You really don't have to defend too much. take two out and when you want to heal up quick actually what you should do is you should sit down starts resting you and then you bandage. So you're resting while you bandage. And then you come down the big stairs. This right here is probably the hardest part for most new people. Just so you know, there's no safe resting place here. If you're resting in that room right there, they could still, for some reason, aggro out here onto you. When you come here, you want to peekish. Yep, when you get one on you, there will probably be more than one, so... I got lucky. Down this hall to the right, 
There will probably be two. If you want to parry, you can just parry one. Here comes another one. run so sometimes when you first start you know you will have to run because you don't have enough health to tank as many but as your health goes up you'll be able to tank more if you can get a couple bandages in then you can band-aid and Turn around and probably get a couple of good hits in. See if they're still following me. Nope. Alright. As your strength goes up and your aggressive stance as well, you're going to start hitting them for more. This side's easy because there's always pretty much just one guy down here. Then if you want to come down here and look for the treasure chest, you can. Hopefully you brought a torch. Come down here. Take the first right. There's no bandits down here. And then you can find some money. Some scrolls and some more money if you want. Some of the other chests in the dungeon have food and stuff in them.
Uh oh. Alright, so we got a couple clayed points. We need to make sure we put these in here. So. I know I'm gonna get these eventually. I go for the move speed first. Make this all a little bit faster. As you bandage yourself more, it will train your anatomy up and eventually you'll be healing for like 45s and stuff like that, so. Won't be so bad. Getting myself a little overweight here. Up here, there's another chest, no bandits. We can just run up here freely. And I'm kind of full, so the reason I'm coming up here is because there can be spelt bread in here. Not too bad for that spelt bread. Maybe the money. Band aids. Down here, there should be two bandits in this hallway here that I'm in. And there's a lootable urn at the end. See how when I keep hitting this guy, he, the other one just sits there and blocks? That's kind of what you want. So we'll go down here and we'll check this urn, then check the treasure chest, and that'll be the end of this tutorial. Basically, that's how I grind clay in Haven. And, you know, when my sword is under half on durability or it's getting close, you know, I'll probably go and do that red cape run again even though we didn't find any capes that time 
Um, I'll post some pictures of what the kind of loot looks like and where other bodies can be on other instances. They'll be in those same spots, just maybe slightly moved. You know, a few yards away. So we're going to come up here and take a right, and then we will be checking the last chest. Mainly for food and things like that. Money. And when we get full, we want to head back out to that campfire by the zombie graveyard. Sell, and then we can either bank the gold or come back. But you want to get a little bit of gold stacked up in the beginning so you have enough for books. Some flake stone, uprum, and cesium. Like, people might want that stuff, but I mean, people definitely can use it and help chat. Last time I had a bunch, I asked, and nobody wanted it, so. But you can definitely grab that cup from it and cesium and flake stone if you want to try it and get someone to make you. Maybe like a cup from dagger or like some sword. But yeah, that is the bandit dungeon. I'm going to work my way back to the top and thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment below. There's another player here. Perfect. He has a black bear. So, I'll most likely be looking for another haven where there isn't a person grinding this, because it'll make it slow for both of us. Um, yep, let me know in the comments below what else you want to know about haven. I will be making another video of where the rat cave is. We can test that clay to XP down there as well. And maybe some other bandit locations, so... Alright guys, thanks for watching. Bye.